for that as a non-profit initiative by the students of the Platidium Cancipium. In this chapter, we are going to learn about carbon and its compounds. The contents of this chapter is properties, classification of organic compounds, acyclic compounds, cyclic compounds, classes of organic compounds, hydrocarbons, Roman water test, functional groups, and homologous series. The amount of carbon present in the Earth's crust and in the atmosphere is quite meager. Meager in the sense it is very less in quantity. The Earth's crust has only 0.02% of carbon in the form of minerals like carbonates. Carbonates refer to CO3 and hydrogen carbonates refer to HCO3. And then we have coal and petroleum. And the atmosphere has 0.03% of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is CO2. In spite of this small amount of carbon available in nature, the importance of carbon seems to be immense. Like if we take respiration, which is a very important process in almost all living organisms, human beings take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. And in the same case, uh, plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen, where carbon dioxide contains carbon. Therefore, Carbon plays a very important role in our day-to-day -day life. Properties. The unique nature of carbon such as catenation. What is catenation? If we take this image, here we can see a carbon has formed another bond with another carbon. Therefore, the ability of an atom to form a bond with the same element and form a chain-like structure is known as catenation. And what is tetravalency? Like carbon is, has the ability to form four different bonds. Therefore, it has a valency of four and multiple bonding also explains tetravalency. Enables it to combine with itself or with other elements like hydrogen. With hydrogen, it forms hydrocarbons, example methane. And with oxygen, it forms carbon dioxide with nitrogen cyanide. And hence forms large number of compounds. All these compounds are made up of covalent bonds. What are covalent bonds? Like if we take the case of carbon dioxide. This is the structure of carbon dioxide. Here, the bond is shared between carbon and oxygen. Therefore, this is referred to as covalent bond. Okay. Where the elements are completely shared between both the elements in that molecule. Organic compounds have a higher molecular weight and complex structure. They are mostly insoluble in water but soluble in organic solvents such as ether, carbon tetrachloride and toluene. Carbon tetrachloride is CF4. We will discuss about ether and toluene in the upcoming parts. And insoluble in water. There is a very prominent example which we know which is soluble in water. Like we all know glucose C6H12O6. This glucose is soluble in water. Like we know, we uh, mix glucose in water and drink. Therefore, this glucose is also an organic compound, but it does not follow this property. It is soluble in water. They are highly inflammable in nature. So, organic compounds easily catch fire. Organic compounds are less reactive comp when compared to inorganic compounds. Hence, the reaction involving organic compounds proceeded slower. It's Mostly organic compounds form covalent bonds in nature. We have already discussed carbon dioxide. They have lower melting point and boiling point when compared to that of inorganic compounds. Like inorganic compounds mostly form ionic bonds. And organic compounds form covalent bonds. Ionic bond has a larger strength when compared to that of covalent bonds. Therefore, it requires a higher heat uh, to break the Ionic bonds, whereas in the case of covalent bonds, a medium amount of heat is enough. Therefore, inorganic compounds have a higher melting and boiling point when compared to that of covalent bonds, that is organic compounds. They are volatile in nature. Because of the lower melting and boiling point, if we give a little amount of heat itself, they will start burning. Therefore, it is very easily uh, volatile in nature. They exhibit the phenomenon of isomerism in which a single molecular formula represents several organic compounds. Like uh, if we take the case of butane. Butane is CH3, CH2, CH2 and CH3. 
Here, this butane can also be formed as CH3, CH, CH3, CH3. This is 2 methyl propane. And this is butane. So, if we take this case, this butane has the ability to form propane 2. And therefore, this is known as isomerism. Organic compounds are prepared in laboratory. Okay. Classification of organic compounds based on the carbon chain. If we take organic compounds, they are of two types. Number one, acyclic and the number two is cyclic compound. What is acyclic? Acyclic means it lies in a straight chain like this or like this. And cyclic is they start at one point and end at the same point. Example is benzene. And what is homocyclic compounds? If all the atoms in the, LM, uh, in the cycle is of the same element, then it is known as homocyclic. Like in the benzene, we have only carbon inside the ring. Therefore, it is homocyclic. And then what is heterocyclic? If we take pyridine, the, here and all we have carbon. But at this position, there is a nitrogen. Therefore, if there is more than one different element in the ring, it is known as heterocyclic. And this homocyclic is divided into two compounds. One is alicyclic and the another one is aromatic compounds. What is alicyclic? If all the elements are only carbon, this alicyclic is also known as carbocyclic. Carbo. Carbo refers to carbon. Therefore, if all the elements in this ring consist of only carbon, it is known as carbocyclic. And in the case of aromatic, it is of two types again. One is benzenoid and another one is non-benzenoid. We know homocyclic, the important example is benzene. And this aromatic is of two types, that is benzenoid and non-benzenoid. What is benzenoid? If the parent is benzene, like if we take the case of phenol, there is one OH in the place of an hydrogen. Like benzene is normally This is benzene and all the elements here is carbon. So, here 1H is replaced by OH. This is known as phenol. And if we, if we take the case of non-benzenoid, there is no benzene to see. Therefore, it is non-benzenoid. And if we take the case of heterocyclic compounds, heterocyclic compounds is again of two types. One is alicyclic and another one is aromatic. And alicyclic refers to THF. What is THF? Tetra hydrofurin. And next one is aromatic compounds, which is uh, where we take the example of pyridine. Alicyclic or open chain compounds. These are the compounds in which the carbon atom are linked in a linear pattern to form the chain. Like we have CH3, CH3, ethane propane, butane, everything is an example of alicyclic compound. If all the carbon atoms in the chain are connected by single bond, they are saturated. Like this is saturated. If one or more double bond or triple bond exists between the carbon atom, then the compounds are unsaturated. We'll discuss about them. Cyclic compounds. Organic compounds in which the chain of carbon is closed or cyclic is called cyclic compounds and the important example is benzene C C C If the chain contains only carbon atom, they are known as carbocyclic compounds. This benzene is an example of carbocyclic compound and another prominent example is cyclopropane which we discussed there. If the uh, chain contains carbon and other atoms like oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, these are heterocyclic. And the important example is pyridine we have discussed there. Alicyclic compound contains one or more carbocyclic ring which may be saturated or unsaturated whereas aromatic compounds contain one or more benzene rings. We will discuss them later in detail.
hydrocarbons. The organic compounds that are composed of only carbon and hydrogen are referred to as hydrocarbons. The carbon atom joins together to form the framework of the compound. These are regarded as the parent organic compound and all other compounds are considered to be derived from hydrocarbon by replacing one or more hydrogen with another atom or group of atoms. Like if we take a methane, this is a parent and this is an hydrocarbon. How do you say this is an hydrocarbon? There is only carbon and hydrogen. Therefore, it is an hydrocarbon. And if we replace one hydrogen, how is methane? Methane will be like this. Here it also explains tetravalency because it has four bonds. And if one hydrogen is replaced by OH, this methane is the parent, but it has formed into an alcohol now. Therefore, this all the other elements or all the other functional groups are formed only by replacing one or more hydrogen in the parent hydrocarbon. Okay. Hydrocarbons. There are three types. Number one, alkene, alkene and alkyne. We can number them as one, two, three, which also represents as one bond, two bonds and three bonds. If we take the general formula of an alkene, Cn, H2n plus 2. Let's substitute n is equal to 1. Then we have CH4. What is CH4? CH4 is methane. And this is methane. And if we talk about alkene. But we know that we cannot take n is equal to 1. Why is that so? Because it has to form a double bond. And hydrogen cannot take in two double bonds because hydrogen has a deficiency of only one electron. Therefore, it has to form a bond with an, another element. And we know in hydrocarbons, it can form a bond only with carbon or hydrogen. Therefore, hydrogen is cancelled. Now, it can form a bond only with carbon. So, N should never be equal to 1 in the case of alkenes and alkynes. It should always start from 2. So, we are taking ethylene or ethene where we have c2 and h4 okay and here there's a double bond and ethylene e and e and next we have alkynes alkynes is c2 h2 where we have a triple bond and this ends with ein ethine so this is ethene and this is ethine okay characteristics of hydrocarbons Lower hydrocarbons are gases at room temperature, example methane and ethane. They are colorless and odorless. The boiling point of hydrocarbon increases with an increase in the number of carbons. Like if we take uh, butane, see, here, see. Here we have one, two, three, four. Four bonds within carbon itself and there are some other bonds with hydrogen also. Therefore, it requires heat to break each and every bond. So, as the number of carbons increases, the more number of bonds also increases. Therefore, more amount of heat is required to break each and every bond. Therefore, the boiling point increases. They undergo combustion reaction with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. Be it any hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon consists of only carbon and hydrogen. And if this is reacting with O2, we get CO2 plus H2O with proper balancing. Alkenes are the least reactive when compared to the other classes of hydrocarbons because there is no double bond or triple bond. Alkenes are the most reactive due to the presence of triple bond. And alkenes are saturated whereas alkenes and alkynes are unsaturated. So, uh, that we have discussed earlier, they are insoluble in water. How do we identify whether a compound is saturated or unsaturated? Assuming that we are taking two test tubes and in test tube 1, we are adding methane and in test tube 2, we are adding ethene. So, now we are going to add bromine water to both the test tubes. Bromine water will naturally be brown in color. And now if we add the bromine water in methane and in the ethene test tube and wait for a while, we can see that the methane test tube brown color has turned into a transparent water like one and the 
uh, ethene one has no chain, which explains that if there is no double bond or triple bond, the bromine water does not decolorize. Only the uh, unsaturated compounds decolorize bromine water. Saturated compounds do not decolorize bromine. Okay. So what is functional groups? We have discussed earlier. How are functional groups formed? We take uh, we'll take ethane. And in this ethane, if we substitute one hydrogen with that of chlorine, it forms CH2Cl. It forms halo compounds. And if we substitute the same chlorine with OH, it forms alcohols with aldehyde that is C double bond OH, it forms aldehydes and with C double bond O, it forms ketones. With C double bond O, OH, it forms carboxylic acid and with C double bond O, OR. How is ether esters form? If we replace this hydrogen with some other compound, then ester is formed and amino is NH2 and nitro is NO2. Homologous series. What is homologous series? Homologous series is a group or a class of organic compounds having same general formula and similar chemical properties in which the successive member differs by CH2 group. If we take two table, we know two ones are two. Two twos are four. There is a difference of two. Similarly, in this whole group, there is a difference of CH2. Like if we take methane, it has CH4 and then comes ethane with C2H6. Therefore, if we subtract this, there is an extra CH2. This CH2 is in excess. And in propane, we have one more extra CH2. And in butane, there is another CH2. Therefore, there is a difference of only CH2 in the successive members. If you observe the above series, you can notice that each successive member has one methylene group. What is methylene group? CH2. More than the precedent member of the series and hence they are called as homologs. Characteristics of homologous series. Each member of the series differs from the preceding or the succeeding member by one methylene group and hence by molecular mass of 14. How do they say it is 14? We know the molecular mass of carbon is equal to 12 AMU. What is AMU? AMU is atomic mass unit. And hydrogen, it has 1 AMU. Now it is 12 and we have 2 hydrogen. Therefore, 2 into 1. That is equal to 14 AMU. Therefore, there is a difference of 14 AMU. All members of the homologous series contains the same element and functional group. They are represented by a general formula of alkanes is CN, H2N, plus 2. And with alkenes, we have CN, H2N. The members in each homologous series show a regular gradation in their physical properties with respect to their increase in molecular mass. What is physical properties? Physical property refers to boiling point and melting point. And in boiling point and melting point, as we go down the table, there is an increase in one CH2 group. Therefore, an extra bond is formed. Therefore, more amount of heat is required to break that bond. Therefore, there is an increase in physical properties. In chemical properties, the reaction with oxygen and uh, other compounds, it doesn't show any great difference. All the members can be prepared by common method. We'll discuss more about carbon and its compounds in the upcoming parts. Stay tuned. Thank you.